Welcome to Vision Forward's Tech Connect Live, connecting you to the world of assistive technology. And now, here are your hosts, Corey and Luke. <laughs> oh, thank you. Quiet down. It's a little too... I mean, sometimes... The amount of people who are excited to see us, it's overwhelming. It is. It's overwhelming. I wish it all to shut up. I mean, it actually, every time it starts, it sounds like the exact same amount of people clapping every time. It's strange, isn't it? But, you know, it's because we always have a full studio we audience. We sure do have a full studio. <laughs> this is filmed in front of a live studio yeah. audience. I mean, it kind of is. We have Jonathan. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, hello, Good everyone. <clears throat> Welcome back to Tech Connect Live, where we talk about tech and we connect you with the tech, and we do it all live yes. on a Thursday at 11 yeah. o'clock. It is truth in advertising. Exactly. And today it is Thursday, and it is 11 o'clock. And that means it's time for a new show. And today we will be talking about the very exciting Apple Vision Pro. Corey, Apple yes. Vision Pro, what's yes. that all about? Are we jumping right into that? No, I guess okay. we'll, we'll get into that in a second. <laughs> yes. Uh, but I uh, hope uh, everybody's uh, take, uh, had a chance to take a look at that headset because it looks kind of interesting. We will be taking a dive into it in the show as well as checking out the uh, an edited version of yes. the release video. Six that, minute. It, I love yeah. on YouTube how you can find where, where YouTube channels will take Apple. Well, not even Apple, but any, yeah. Yeah, any any of these product launches and, and literally edit it down to exactly what you need. So we have a exactly. six-minute edit that we're going to actually take a look at. You know, we're modern people. We do not have time to mess around. No. Just give us the info and actually, give it to us fast. Sometimes I feel like we have nothing but time to <laughs> mess around. But. Um, anyway, so uh, that's what we're, we're going to be getting to in the yeah. show. But before we do that, we do have some updates about the show for those who are, have been watching regularly. Yeah. You will know that we uh, were asking some questions about what we should do with the show moving forward. So we are going to make a couple, or a couple of relatively minor changes. One of them is probably more uh, more extreme than the others. Corey, why yeah. don't you tell people all about what we have coming up? Yeah, so we had, we had obviously sent that survey. We looked at everybody's results and we really came down to a few things in, to ensure that we continue to provide a live experience that is useful not only for you watching and listening, but for Luke and I as well too, because we obviously don't have uh, all the time in the world, so we wanted to make sure that we were doing what we wanted to do and getting a good reach of people. So first and foremost, uh, our sessions will, will remain on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central Time for live Number two, there will range anywhere for th from 30 to 60 minutes, usually hovering around 45 minutes. It'll kind of depend on, obviously, on the topic. We'd always been trying to push an hour every time. And I think what we're just going to do now is let the topic sort of decide yeah. what the time is. So it might be 30, might be less than that sometimes. We just don't exactly know. Um, we're also, Luke and I had recognized that we really wanted to spend a little bit more time preparing topics and preparing ourselves for the actual live demonstration. I think in most cases, nine out of 10 times, I think we do a great job. I, I, you know, I think we are, but I do, we do, we oh, both. We should put that to the audience, really. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. We both recognize, though, that sometimes we're not as prepared as we would like to be with things. And we really, again, want to uh, produce the best show, so we're going to spend more time with some preparation. And I mean, that affects us as much as it affects anybody watching. Exactly. You know, nobody likes to come into something when you don't feel 100% about it. Mm -hmm. And the other big thing, and this is the big change, and, and but I'm going to announce it, and then I'm going to do a little bit of explanation why we will no longer be uh, broadcasting live via Zoom. Moving forward, all of our sessions will only be on YouTube Live. So we'll still have live sessions 11 a.m. Central Time on th every other Thursday. They will be streamed via YouTube Live and they'll be archived on YouTube as they are now already for, for anyone to watch them uh, in, in the future. Now, before... Uh, before I explain why we made that decision, let me just clarify really quickly. I think in a lot of cases, it's actually going to be a lot easier for individuals. You'll continue to get an email on the Friday before our Tech Connect Live that'll tell you what the topic is. And then the morning of the session, you'll still re receive a reminder email. And in that email, 
will be a direct link to the YouTube Live. So all you have to do is activate that link. You'll be brought right to our YouTube Live page for that specific session, and you won't have to do anything. Just hang tight. Once we go live, it'll automatically start playing for you. Yeah. So in most cases, it'll actually be easier, I think, for people to, to access our content instead of getting into the Zoom meeting and making sure you're in and all that good stuff. Uh, one but, thing, though, I believe, Corey, I'm right in saying that those YouTube links will be unique for each uh, yeah, individual session. Yeah, they will be unique each and every time. So t two, quick, two quick things. Yes, they will be unique each and every time. And so that more that email you receive in the morning, you will get that unique email. If you're not getting those emails, then you need to register on our LMS uh, techconnect.vision-forward.org. As long as you take that quick 30 seconds to create a free account, then you'll make sure that you receive the email uh, to get that every morning. Um, Number two, if you're someone who's like, oh, I don't want to bother with that, if you just, if you're comfortable with YouTube and you just head over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash vision forward tech connect, you'll actually see right on that page, you'll see a link for the upcoming live session. So you can get it that way as well too. And then obviously that YouTube link never changes. So yeah. if you uh, if you want to, if you prefer to do it that way, you can, you can go there. Now, the reason we make or are making this change, honestly, is that we had found that we are just, there's too many technical difficulties and it was really limiting how and what we were providing demonstrations on. Like today we're gonna be playing a video and because we're going across Zoom and YouTube at the same time, it was just a nightmare trying to ensure that both people on Zoom and people on YouTube got the video, the, the actual visual and the audio. They're two different components. And so every single time we were doing a session, we were always fighting some kind of technology battle of making sure each and every person saw it. And half the time you even notice, half the time YouTube didn't have audio or Zoom didn't get this. And if we had guests, then it was a whole nother thing. And so it just became too much trouble. And so what we had decided is that we just need one platform which will allow us to just eat more easily do what we wanna do and not come into each and every one frustrated. I think we do a very good job when we start a session. People don't know how frustrated we are sometimes. <laughs> but if you ever, uh, if our mics were ever unmuted three minutes before we go live. You might hear some things a, which uh, yeah. you could never unhear. It, it's a different story. So we know for some people it might be a bit of a change and a challenge, but trust us, we're doing everything. We're making these changes for the best for us and for you. Um, the YouTube is going to be the YouTube. I feel like I'm a 50-year-old. The YouTube. Uh, the YouTube going live on YouTube is going to be just as easy to, co to connect with us. You can still use that comments feature too so that there will still be some interaction. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is that and we kind of mentioned this before as well that the intros will be uh, will be snappier. <laughs> Not as well. this one, obviously. No, this one because we have in. things to yeah things but to say. But we recognized uh, that uh, you know sometimes it was 15, 20 minutes in before we even started our topic. Yes, Luke and I like to chit chat. We were telling <laughs> jokes. We will absolutely tighten that up. We'll still have a joke. Well, yeah, so have to, um, but it'll just be in and out. Feel free still to uh, send your jokes on over, but uh, other than that, yeah, we'll be trying to get into the topics more, more quickly. So hopefully, all in all, those changes will be positive for both uh, Corby and I and the audience as well, and we'll if, see uh, what happens moving forward. If anyone has any questions, concerns, uh, needs to know how to get a account through our uh, LMS because you want to get those emails uh, morning of, you can send an email to techconnect at vision-forward.org and I'll be happy, Luke or I will be happy to help you get those accounts set up. Or if you're just like, hey, I need that email but I don't wanna create an account, that's fine too. Just send us an email with your email address. Yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Yep. Uh, and we'll make sure you get added to that, e uh, to that announcement email as well. All right, so I think that probably covers everything we need to say about that. I think it does. Yeah. I think it does. If anybody, if, so we are obviously in Zoom today. If there's anybody on Zoom that has any questions, go ahead and throw it in the chat. Yep. Not only about what we're talking about now, but as we move forward, talking about the Apple Vision Pro, 
Anyone on YouTube, producer Jonathan is monitoring chat, uh, comments. So go ahead and throw your comments and questions uh, in there on YouTube as well. All right. So uh, as we had said at the top, we are going to be talking about the Apple Vision Pro today. Now, this isn't actually specifically an assistive technology device, but uh, we will be kind of speculating on some potential for it to be used as a wearable electronic magnification device. We've looked at a number of those on the show here before, things mm -hmm. like the Iris Vision Pro, uh, Iris Vision Inspire, Vision Buddy, eSight. There's all sorts of them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so the Apple Vision Pro isn't designed specifically for that purpose, but we think it might have potential in that area. Uh, but it's also just uh, interesting to speculate on it as a piece of technology and some of the other accessibility features it has, including uh, voiceover, which we've already seen some of that in action in a developer video. Yeah. But we wanted to uh, make sure that people knew what the Vision Pro was to begin with. So we do have a video lined up, which is, uh, as we had said, an edited version of the kind of uh, the re reveal video um, from Apple's conference, what was that, like two weeks ago? Three yeah, weeks it was ago, WWDC, like so that was uh, maybe more now, three three weeks ago? Because yeah, uh, we did a whole video so on that's it. Right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's probably yeah. been at least three weeks or more. So we're going to try and uh, play the video now because uh, this because we are currently going to Zoom <laughs> and YouTube, and as Corey had said, that can cause some, uh, head, some head scratches in terms of getting uh, things uh, working correctly. So hopefully this is going to work, and we will get audio on both YouTube and Zoom here. Let's give it a try. And while you're doing that, I'll just mention Unfortunately, there has not been a audio described version of the Vision Pro video, at least that, that we didn't find. So unfortunately, this video is not audio described. Luke and I will be chatting a little bit. We don't want to talk too much over the video. It's only six minutes long, but when we come back, we'll make sure that Luke gives a good description of kind of what the headset looks like for those that might not be able to see the video. Okay, so let's give this a try, shall we? <clears throat> we shall. Okay. Okay, so I just need to go to OBS, and hopefully... And you did we, the audio share. I did, so okay. hopefully That's we're going to start seeing this. I believe that augmented reality is a profound technology. So today, I'm so excited to Cook announce here. an entirely CEO new AR excited. platform <laughs> with a revolutionary new product. This is job to be excited. <laughs> Introducing <laughs> Apple Vision Pro. So count how many funny adjectives Vision we get. Vision Pro is a new kind of computer that augments reality by seamlessly blending seamlessly. the real world yeah. with the digital world. So a man the is putting on a headset here. interface looks and feels truly present in your room. They have dimension, respond dynamically to light, and even cast shadows to help you understand scale and distance. It's easy to make apps any scale, even larger than life. And you can place apps life exactly where you want them, <laughs> anywhere in your space. It feels natural, With like moving real objects. <laughs> and launching new apps doesn't take space from existing ones. They can grow beyond the dimensions of your physical room with environments. Environments extend apps, and transform your space enabling otherwise impossible experiences. Every graphical <laughs> element has a sense of vitality. Simply tap your fingers together to select and gently flick to scroll. So that's the combination of hands and eyes together Operating the device truly with feels hand like movements. magic. Yeah. With Vision Pro, movements. you can look at a search field and just start dictating. And with Siri, you can quickly open, know how close well Siri apps, works. <laughs> play media, and more. And of course, Vision Pro is always in sync working with models. your iPhone, iPad, and <laughs> That's Mac. what Siri says when she's not the working. Browsing web <laughs> is fantastic. Web pages are large, making it amazing to watch videos so or read So it's pretty incredible. Articles. You can surf the internet. As you scroll down the page, Although small from an text accessibility is crisp and I think easy that to read be at any really angle. It you can arrange multiple apps you around and, you in space. Yeah. You can However make it you really want. large. Mm -hmm. Layer them on top of each other or place them above, below, or to the Move sides apps of other apps. You want. Like here, where you simply turn your head to change focus from Safari. So you to basically work have unlimited computer screen. You can receive you can a 3D object oh, sure. in messages, pull it out, and look at it from every angle, just so cool. as if it was there in front of you. Vision Pro also volume. works seamlessly with familiar Bluetooth accessories like Magic Trackpad and Magic Keyboard, which are great when you're writing a long email or working on a spreadsheet in numbers. And you can even bring your Mac wirelessly into Apple Vision Pro. This is cool. Just by looking at it. Place your Mac screen wherever you want and expand it, giving you an enormous private and portable 4K display. Apple Vision Pro has an amazing FaceTime experience. 
FaceTime so sure now becomes spatial, taking advantage of the room yeah, around it's you. Okay for you. And within FaceTime, but other people don't. You see can you. share apps with others they see an and use them together with SharePlay. In Vision Pro, every panorama you've ever taken on your iPhone now expands and wraps around you life That's size. Cool. That is kind of cool. Vision yeah. Pro is Close Apple's vision. first 3D yeah. camera to give your eyes what they need. We had to invent a display system with a huge number of pixels, but in a small form factor. A display where the pixels would disappear, creating a smooth, continuous image. This is kind of crazy. It starts with a micro OLED Apple These Silicon backplane that fits 64 yeah. pixels in the space of a single iPhone pixel. Yeah, They're mm -hmm. just seven and a half microns wide. Oh. Combined, six and a half? Vision Pro has 23 <laughs> million pixels across two panels that are each just the size of a postage stamp. We designed a custom three-element lens with incredible sharpness and clarity. The system also provides high-resolution video to the display, enables precise head and hand tracking, performs real-time 3D mapping, and more. A high-performance eye tracking system uses high-speed cameras and a ring of LEDs. At the foundation of this system is Apple Silicon in a unique dual-chip design. So the, uh, it starts with the Apple M2 chip. Running in parallel is a, is a brand chip, new chip called R1. Also in their new it processes lab, input also have this R1 from 12 cameras, for the sensors and cameras, five sensors, and six microphones. R1 ensures that experiences cameras. feel like they're taking place mm -hmm. right in front of your eyes. Vision Pro goes yeah. beyond conveying just five, your eyes microphones. and creates an authentic representation of you. After a quick enrollment process using the front sensors on Vision Pro, the system uses an advanced encoder-decoder neural network to create your digital persona. It delivers a natural representation which dynamically calls, matches your facial and hand not actually you, it's Vision a, an OS an is the first operating system designed from the ground like, up, up for spatial computing. <laughs> the same Some frameworks available in <laughs> iPadOS and iOS are also included in VisionOS. This means hundreds of thousands of iPad and iPhone apps will be available on Vision Pro so at launch. We've been iOS, working with yeah. Unity to bring those apps to Vision Pro. It's iOS, but so popular Unity-based yeah. games and apps can gain full access to Vision OS features. Optic ID. This new system uses the uniqueness of your Let's iris, which is thing. distinct even with identical twins to instantly unlock Vision Pro. In Apple Vision Pro, where you look stays private. Eye input is isolated to a separate background process, so apps and websites can't see where you are looking. So that's mm, Apple Vision privacy. Pro. Apple Vision Pro starts at $34.99. Okay, let's Ooh. stop it now. Um, one thing I will say, and so we've got a lot to unpack here, mm. I think. Just the, the last piece there, Apple has always done a really good job of putting privacy first. Yeah. Um, as they said here, the eye gaze technology, all that is is behind, um, you know, behind f whatever you want to call it, walls so that websites right. can't track where you're looking, ads, ad tracking, all that kind of sense, mm -hmm. all that stuff. The same with their, like the fingerprint and face ID, all of that is on a hardware chip and is not accessible to you know, other websites and things like that. Same with their smart home stuff. Mm. Anyways, they've always, I mean, privacy has always been a, uh, a push for, for Apple, and I think that's really important. Yeah, so um, that was the Apple Vision Pro. It uh, is an interesting new headset. Yeah. Um, Design-wise, let's just talk about the physical yeah, appearance. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Yeah, it looks um, better than most other headsets, I would say. Um, there is a front panel, the actual kind of um, visor part itself, which mm -hmm. is uh, essentially like a... Um, it's like a rectangle with rounded ends. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's a proper name for that shape. But uh, anyway, it's pretty slim, but then it has to actually go into the headset part, which has some optical lenses that you look through. And in the promotional materials, they're showing one large strap that goes behind the head to hold it in place. But I have heard there is actually a top strap as well. And because the device is fairly heavy, then you kind of need both straps just for comfort purposes. How thick would you say, like, out, coming out from your face? Is it coming out pretty far? Yeah, they... 
they have a tendency to show it from the front, so you which can't is really tell. Yeah, yeah, I can see why. Yeah, but um, when you actually see pictures from the side, it still comes out a fair way. So okay. we are not talking about something which is particularly discreet here. Um, but I think uh, of more interest is the technology that's inside it, and it seems to be, in terms of the technology, the most advanced uh, headset out there at the moment. It sure seems like it, from what I've read and, and have listened to other ex people's experience have used it. So first and foremost, um, the two main ways that you interact with this device is by uh, eye gaze technology, so it can track where you're looking, and then also hand motions. Uh, unlike other VR or so virtual reality or AR, augmentative reality devices, there aren't controllers. So if anyone's familiar with like the Quest 2 from Meta or used to be Oculus, those you actually hold on to controllers and the controllers have sensors in them. But uh, all of the cameras, there's so many cameras on the Apple Vision Pro that it can just track where your hands are. Not only can it track where your hands are, but it can also track what fingers you're bringing together, pointer to thumb, ring to thumb, middle to thumb, pinky to thumb. It can tell all of those difference, differences. And so a combination of eye gaze and then your hands is how you control it. So obviously from an accessibility standpoint, the first concern I had and a lot of people had was, well, eye gaze technology, if you're blind uh, or, or severely low vision, what good is that gonna be? And uh, fortunately, the confirmed accessibility that we know about has alternative inputs where it's strictly using hands uh, so that you, you can bypass the eye gaze technology altogether. Although what I have been told is the eye gaze technology is pretty insane. Like it's the best that's on the market right now. Yeah, those are the reports coming out that they they really have kind of pushed the boundaries in terms mm -hmm. of what this thing can recognize. And the, the hand gestures as well, people are saying that they are remarkably responsive and accurate as well. Yeah. Um, so, it, like uh, Corey said, it can identify which fingers you are uh, tapping together, but also it can recognize holds as well. Yeah, or, you know, so some of the, there was a really cool developer video speaking specifically about voiceover and ac accessibility to games and things on the Vision Pro. And when they talk there, they kind of discuss some of the actual gestures that you can do. So for example, if you wanted to swipe right, like you would do typically on an iPhone or iPad, you can bring your pointer finger, I think it's your pointer and um, right thumb pointer on your right thumb. hand, yeah. yeah, just together pinch, and then that's like doing a flick. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there was also multiple, so you could yeah. do a double double pinch, Double pinch and hold is something. So it really is amazing on what it's tracking. So I think what we're going to see is a kind of a translation of the finger gestures we're used to on, on the flat piece of glass, moving those to pinches and in, in stuff on both left or right hand. And so that's going to be a whole new uh, slew of uh, gestures to learn. Mm -hmm. I kind of wondered why they didn't just stick with the swiping gestures that people already know from, uh, you know, using the iPhone. I think my guess, and maybe I'm totally wrong, but if you've got your hand out and you go maybe left to right, it's harder for it to track that versus bringing a fin two fingers together mm. where it can. I, I don't know. Yeah. I also think from an I I significantly prefer pinching. Than, in, than instead of having a finger out in front of me and going, swiping, you know, trying to point right. Uh, I feel like it's a more natural gesture to kind of pinch your hands I together. feel like you're just lazy and you just want to do the least <laughs> the least effort possible. Uh, uh, that, yes, <laughs> I uh, agree 100%. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. We have found out today Apple Vision Pro is perfect for people who are lazy. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, so there is another video out there which is a, a video that covers more of the accessibility side of things. And in that video, they, as Corey had said, they do show some of the voiceover stuff. So voiceover is fully integrated and so you can operate the device using voiceover, using the various different gestures. They showed some bizarre kind of little app that they had made about clouds that were sad and you had to make them happy by, <laughs> yeah. by uh, yeah. like double tapping on them or whatever. And uh, yeah, it was all a bit weird. But uh, anyway, it does show that this headset is going to be fully accessible. Now, my question to you, Corey, yes. is this. What benefit do you think, as a person who's blind, using this with voiceover would be versus using an iPhone or a Mac or whatever? Yeah, I think it's one of these questions, and I think this question is somewhat true for a lot of people blind or sighted. 
I think this is such a new device, a new category that I don't yet know how exactly it would, it be, it would be used and where the benefit would be. Because I think if I think back to when the Apple Watch was even announced, mm -hmm. if you would ask me the same question, I could have said, well, you know, I'm not sure because I can just pull my phone out that's always in my pocket and see who the text was or check my pedometer or make a call. But there's something about having it on your wrist and the convenience that, that comes with it. So I don't know with Vision Pro, you know, where from a from a strictly from somebody who's totally blind that cannot benefit from the screens and the dynamic text and video and the 3D uh, capabilities and all of that of the screens in front of you, I think that's a great question. And, and I honestly don't know that I have an answer to it. I don't know where or how it could be. I mean, I love that it's going to be accessible and we can find out, mm. but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what a use case is, is gonna be. Now, th now this, these, these features aren't con confirmed, but let me go on kind of a quick little assumption or wish list to better answer your question. If Ira, Be My Eyes, Envision, uh, um, Arcs, you know, uh, Supervision, of those, all of those apps get access to the cameras and I can now have hands-free mm -hmm. access to, uh, you know, let's say Ira and Be My Eyes. If I have hands-free access to a video interpreter, someone that can see through and I can talk with, that would be a, 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 a so much easier than carrying my camera. If I had an app where I could walk into a room and get some of the uh, room and, you know, things like uh, Seeing AI and Envision does, where I can find out where chairs are using, and if it can use, which, because it does 3D camering, mm -hmm. cameras, you know it's going to be able to do distance. Yep. So most likely it should be able to say chair uh, on your right five feet away, mm -hmm. like the iPhone does now. If I could get that hands free now, coming right just you know as I come into a room, that's where I think you could start to see a, a much bigger use for someone who's blind. Yeah, that seems beneficial. And Corey, I don't know if you have seen uh, what Envision have got going on at the moment. Yeah, their glasses. Yeah, and they have something called Ask Envision. Yes. At least I think it's called Ask Envision. Have you seen this? I saw a brief little headline, but hadn't read the whole thing. So is it? It is mad. Is it? They're using chat GPT. Yes, they are. So, GPT, um, right? Yeah, so Envision is a company who, uh, we've done a, a show on their app before, um, yes. but they have a pair of glasses, which are artificial intelligence glasses. There's no visual component to them, but they do a number of things, including uh, OCR and object recognition and money ID and those type of things. But yeah. um, they have a new feature, which is powered by ChatGPT. Um, and basically, they, you can ask the Envision to, you can OCR a document and ask an Envision any questions about it. Um, you can say, you can just say, um, uh, what do you say now? I think, right, I can't remember. Anyway, you say a phrase and you ask the glasses a question and you okay. can find any information from the document and just read it aloud to you. So it's like, if so anybody that's seen any of our OrCam videos, it right. sounds similar to the smart reading capability, but probably being so part- so much better. I was just gonna say, because you fed in the content to GP, chat GPT, yeah. you could probably ask it anything that's from, are there any spelling seems. mistakes to yeah, are there- exactly. Where's the first phone number? I, I don't know. Any the tell, range of give things. Give me a summary of this document. Exactly. Yeah, you, you can 100% do yeah, that. Yeah, the yeah. range of things that you can do is pretty remarkable. So, so now think about that. You know, so that's into their glasses, but if it's part of their Envision app and the app becomes available on the Vision Pro, mm -hmm. you now have the capability through the glasses. Although well I will too, say at so. the moment it's not part of their app. But, okay. But if it does become part yeah. of the app, you will yeah. have access and to And maybe they won't because that's how they differentiate, yes. get you to get there. But whatever. I mean, those are those cool... I mean, really, there is there is so many kind of, you know, I think so much is going to be limited by where technology is today. You know, I'd love to be able to walk in a room and find out who's in the room, mm -hmm. you know, through facial recognition quickly and seamlessly. We're not there yet. But again, I think the only thing holding us back is just the technology getting there. I mean, it'll it'll get there. I mean, it's also the imagination of the developers as well. Because mm -hmm. people just come up with stuff which you never would have even thought about if they have the right yeah. platform to do it on. One of the real cool examples I heard somebody give about the Vision Pro, and, and it, it sort of it excited me and bummed me out at the same time because I wouldn't be able to enjoy it. 
But think about if you were, um, you know, at a, a an NBA a basketball game, and they had a camera set up on the floor of the cam uh, of the the game, and you paid a subscription to Apple, and you could just watch the basketball game in your Vision Pro from that courtside seat. And think about if you, you know, if it was a 360 cam they had down there and you could turn your head and look at the crowd behind you, maybe turn to your right and see the players on the benches. You know, it's almost like you're right there. Um, and that's just an example of doing like a, a, a basketball game. But I mean, really, with the right camera, it can be any, any event, a concert. Imagine if you were sitting front seat on every concert, live concert moving forward. People could be here live in uh, the tech Yeah, they, it's almost like they were sitting next to us. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I know that sounds crazy, but I do think that, and some of that from a blindness perspective probably is like, well, big deal. But, but from a sound perspective, because the Vision Pro has this spatial... Uh, um, Audio? Yeah, it's got spatial audio. So you'll, you'll, you know, if you were doing this basketball or the concert, you, as you turn your head, you'd be able to hear, you know, the sound would change as if that you were there cool. moving and the speakers are now over on your left hand mm -hmm. side, you know. So just the, the real, the reality or the realistic feeling to it could be really kind of, a, kind of a cool. And I think, I suppose that has always been the, the point of virtual reality, right? Yeah. Is, is that so kind of stuff. put you right there. Yeah. Uh, Tava Aziz says, I wonder what are the accessibility features for those of us with low vision and who do not use voiceover? Well, thank you for asking. Tava. Yeah. So uh, we did also see that there are low vision accessibility features. Now, those weren't actually demonstrated. And, uh, but we did see that some of those uh, common things that you will be familiar with from the iPhone and iPad are there. So we do have screen zoom, for example. Uh, we do have um, you know, high contrast color modes and, and things like that. But the one that we didn't see and that I am most interested yeah. in is uh, the Magnifier app. Now, at the moment, if you have an iPhone, the Magnifier app is an app that comes loaded onto the iPhone and it uh, will basically uh, turn on the back camera and then display that image on the screen and then you have some controls for changing brightness or for changing colors, for changing contrast and for magnification and those types of things. So it's basically turning your iPhone into a, um, an electronic, uh, handheld electronic yeah. magnifier. Now, um, that's great uh, with the iPhone. It's definitely not as good as using a dedicated uh, device, but um, it's super useful. And the question is, are they going to integrate that into the Vision Pro? Because if they do, at that point, what you have is a low vision wearable. Yeah. And, um, you know, Corey and I have been talking about that, and uh, that could really be game changing. Now, here's the thing with the Vision Pro the cost is 3,500 bucks, and that's a lot of money. And uh, other competing headsets have versions which are a lot cheaper. Um, I think the new uh, Oculus uh, Quest um, is, what, 700 or something Yeah, like I think so. so yeah, yeah, something around there. So definitely the Vision Pro is, is an expensive piece of kit. And people are used to that from Apple. You know, yep. Apple tend to release uh, expensive equipment. And uh, I think with this one, you know, the, the amount of stuff in the headset at least uh, somewhat justifies the, the cost. But when it comes to low vision wearables, 3500 is right in that area that people yeah. have been paying. Yeah. So, I mean, if you buy an iris vision live, you're paying three grand. And, and look how much more you're getting on the Vision Pro right. that we assume right now. Yeah. And again, this is gen. This is generation one. Mm -hmm. This is using high quality metal and glass. Who knows when they come out with, you know, again, we got the word pro tacked onto this. So when they come out with the Apple Vision Amateur, <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, let's have that again, Jonathan. Uh, the Apple Vision peasant. <laughs> but I'm, I'm waiting for that yeah. one. <laughs> you're here first. You're gonna, you know, I think you're gonna see that price come down. Yeah. Uh, I think you'll see. I bet you we see a 1999 version oh, at, sure. at some point. Um, and it'll and, just be one of those. Uh, you remember those kaleidoscope things yes, that you look through? Right. <laughs> it'll just be one of those. <laughs> but imagine, I mean, at that point, if if it does provide what some of the low vision guys are doing, mm -hmm. that that's a big that's a big one. Like I if mean, I had a choice between buying an Iris Vision Live or an Apple Vision Pro, and they gave equivalent. Yeah. you know, quality yeah. image and stuff, then obviously 100% of the time I'm going to go with the Vision Pro. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this is like, for me, this is the most exciting potential of this thing. Now, let's just be clear here. They have not shown the Magnifier app 
and there's no guarantee that it's nope. even going to be there. There might be nothing at all. But everything that you need for a low vision wearable is there. You've got yeah. high quality screens. Way more than you need. Well, way more than you need, yeah. <laughs> You've got uh, high quality screens. You have six cameras to choose from. Yeah. Now, yeah, you probably wouldn't be using all of those. <laughs> um, but uh, it has two front facing cameras, which interestingly, I mean, uh, I wonder if there would be a way to use that for some kind of stereo. And That's stereoscopic they, stuff and yeah, yeah. for depth and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, um, you've got the screens, you've got the cameras, you've got the wearable you've design. You've got the processing power. Yeah, you've got the processors. I mean, the, yeah. the stuff that's in this headset is a lot better than you would get with a low vision wearable. I mean, the thing with uh, low vision wearables is so far they've all been made by um, assistive technology companies who are obviously way smaller than <laughs> a company yeah. like Apple. So, you know, they have to charge higher prices because they can't uh, make their devices for the same price because they don't have the same bargaining power that a big company like Apple does. But if Apple comes in with a $3,500 headset and it has low vision capabilities, now that's a real, a real game changer at that point. Yeah, and as you mentioned, so you, we, yeah, it has it has zoom, so the, the the not the ability to magnify, not the outside world magnification, but yeah. we can magnify everything inside. Mm -hmm. It has dy dynamic text as you're comfortable with and used to on your iPhone yep. and your iPad. Yep. It's got guided access as well. The contrast. There's some interesting um, accessibility for low vision users. Again, if you're if you have an issue with eye gazing technology, either because maybe your low vision or, or whatever it might be. There is a, I forget what they call it now. Um, it starts with a T? Mm, uh, Terry? No, well, whatever. Basically what it does is it allows you to almost hold on to a virtual pointer mm -hmm. uh, in your hand so it's a much larger pointer so you can point at what you want. Uh, so it's, again, if the eye gazing technology doesn't work, so what for you're yourself. telling me is those uh, Harry Potter fans out there, their dreams are finally yes, true. Exactly. <laughs> I think uh, from a low vision standpoint, yeah, I, I think the accessibility is going to be crazy good for for individuals bringing things so close to you, mm -hmm. being able to make them quite large, being able to, I, you know, if you think about it, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but let's let's talk about this for a second. Before we do, uh, yeah. let me just. Uh, Jonathan has a question, I think, from the YouTube. Okay. Yeah, we've been seeing some. Oh, hold on. Oh, sorry, John. Go ahead. Yes, so we've been hearing some comparisons between the Irish, uh, Irish Inspire, not the Irish Inspire. <laughs> yeah, the Irish Inspire. <laughs> um, but uh, there's questions about, so you can use it all day if it's plugged in, the Apple Vision Pro, that is, right. mm -hmm. but not the Irish uh, Iris Vision <laughs> Inspire. Now that's going to constantly. <laughs> yeah, right. But... Um, do we have we heard anything about the heating, uh, about how it is? Uh, how warm it's going to get? Yeah, how warm the headset gets. You know... They haven't said anything. I mean, some people who, nobody's, the videos that I've watched, nobody has worn it for a super extended a time. Like 30 minutes for the most part. Yeah, exactly. And everyone said it stayed cool and it was comfortable. So the question, you're right, if we start going an hour, two hours, three hours, yep. Apple's pretty darn good about that kind of stuff too. And he, so I don't know. I mean, it, it, that'll be something we won't know. One thing that we didn't mention is that the battery pack is not part of the head unit itself. Mm -hmm. There's a cable, a uh, supple, supple, supple cable, woven supple. cable uh, that connects the device to a battery pack. That battery pack lasts for about two hours. Uh, or, or then obviously, as they really advertise, it can be used all day while plugged in. This was heavily... Emphasize. Yes. It Listen, was. with this technology, you can plug <laughs> it in to your mains electricity, and, yeah. and you can use it all day. So Stunning. yeah. So the heat thing. I'm 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 absolutely uh, curious about what that's going to be like when yeah. we actually get hands on. Especially right if you're using it all day. Yeah. So I was saying from a low vision standpoint, yes, yes, you know, yes, yes. let's say one of the things that they talk about here, and this could be true both if you were looking at let let's say an email via the, the mail app on the Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. Or you were, you, you, one of the th cool things you can do is if you have a Vision Pro and you walk up and look at your Mac, it'll automatically mm -hmm. show your Mac yeah. on the Vision Love Pro. It. So if you're looking at a, an email that way, whatever. Mm -hmm. How, we work with a number of clients with mm -hmm. magnification that when we magnify something uh, larger than it should be, things go off the screen, mm. right? We have to move the mouse to pan around. And that mm. sometimes can be an issue. Yeah. Do you? How do you think it'll compare from using a mouse panning around mm. versus using your head well, and looking up and down and right? Is, let me, is it more uh, natural? Let me give you some experience here that I have. Yeah, With please. some devices such as the eSight and uh, the Vision Buddy, yes. um, you can magnify inputted video sources. 
Okay, like okay. a YouTube, especially on the, the Vision Buddy, because that's what it's made. You bring in the, the yep. video source. With okay. the eSight as well, though, you can uh, connect via HDMI. So let's say you plug your computer into your eSight, yep. and then you zoom up, zoom up, zoom up. So now the virtual screen in front of you is wider than your yep. field of view. Yep. You're not seeing the whole thing. You're not seeing the yeah. whole thing. So to Corey's point, you have to move your head left and right, up and down in order to pan, because we're not using a mouse here. Now, that seems very natural. But the problem is, what happens when it's so big that it's you know the equivalent of a hundred foot square room? <laughs> sure. At that point, you're literally like spinning circles and like craning your neck up to the ceiling. Got it. So I mean, yeah, that is an issue. Like if you make it too large, it's it's not really going to work. Um, I almost feel like if it is that large, then you probably you probably shouldn't, shouldn't be, be doing it. <laughs> anyway. yeah, yeah. yeah, fair, fair point. Yeah. But, but uh, it, so there is going to be that sweet spot where you can comfortably mm -hmm. move your neck left yeah. to right yeah. versus moving your whole entire body right, right, right. spinning, <laughs> getting dizzy. Yeah, precisely. Uh, and I suppose we also know that the more things are magnified when they're head worn, mm -hmm. the more any movement gets magnified too. Yes. So if you've got something large magnified and you're scanning left and right, any little movement or wiggle is going to be kind I'm of magnified gonna, on the screen. I'm going to counter you on that. Actually. Okay. So gen if we you if we're talking live magnification, then it's definitely a problem when yeah. uh, when you're at high magnification levels, the jerkiness of the image. But when it actually comes to viewing digital content, like we would be doing with this, yeah, um, they can somehow make the panning a lot smoother. So generally, like those movements, if you're looking at an inputted yeah. video source, actually they tend to be a lot smoother. So okay, I, I don't think that would be so much of an issue. I mean. I mean, the interesting thing is that if you put a vision, uh, if you put an iris vision on somebody's head and with no magnification, just the fact of the positioning of the screens and the brightness of the screens, mm -hmm. uh, people can oftentimes see better just from having the headset on. Sure. If you see what I'm saying. Yeah, I get it. So like even... Just even without magnification. Yeah, exactly. Because so, it's just a brighter, yeah, it's like more right defined image, yeah, right exactly, close yeah. up. Sure, right. that makes sense. So even just putting the Vision uh, Pro on potentially would give you, uh, you know, increase mm -hmm. in your acuity for, for doing certain tasks. I think the other interesting thing too, one of the things that we typically hear around the low vision wearables is the the uh, design, the the acceptance factor. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to look odd wearing this big thing. But if you think about it, Apple, Apple is a mainstream company. They're releasing this mainstream product. Will it be, will it become, and we won't know until time, but will it become more acceptable if you're a low vision user wearing this device out in public? Because they're like, oh, that's, an, that's a Vision Pro versus what the heck is that thing on their head? Well, that's the thing that I'm I'm dubious about still. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Apple have done a good job at uh, mainstreaming technology, but I just I still find the idea of everybody using a headset like this to yeah. be unrealistic. Now, I might just be a heathen. I don't know. No, I mean, I, I think you have a lot of great, I mean, obviously it's taking us out of our environment. I mean, there's all those kind of consequences. One of the things that I find to be interesting when we watch the video, the, the 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 launch video here too, is they talk about how uh, there are two cameras on the front, and moving forward, you can shoot this 3D video, mm. and so you can like it's your kid's birthday, you can shoot a video of them blowing their candles out, and then in the future, you can like look at it from all different angles. But yeah. the thing they're not saying is that you're now taking yourself out of that actual the when it's happening live. Right. Your, your kid's like, Daddy, be part of this. And you're like, hey. <laughs> no, I'm filming. I'm, well, yeah, <laughs> blow out your candle. So, I mean, what are what is the long-term effect? It's what the same are we uh, starting to when do I about? go to a concert these days, everybody's like videoing the yes. concert on their phones. And I'm Everyone like, Everyone watches the, yeah. the, video, the, the concert through the little screen because exactly. they're making it. Like, yeah. Guys, this is happening right <laughs> in front of you right now. <laughs> my, my kids have their friends over and they literally sit in the same room and like text each other or play. Like they, they just don't, you know. So uh, I, I guess that that opens up a whole different conversation. But yeah. I do think, though, that Apple, if anybody's going to be able to pull off making this mainstream and acceptable, Apple's going to be the one to probably do it. And with their accessibility background, then they hopefully would also be the ones to yes. really lead the field with the accessibility on these things. Well, they say one of the one of the things they keep touting is that this device, the Apple Vision Pro, is mm -hmm. the first. This device 
as the, the most accessibility options and features of any device they've launched up to this time. Nice. So I think that's a, a probably a... Yeah, that's an important point to yeah, remember. Yeah, 100%. The future is bright, and uh, Corey has guaranteed 23 me... 23 million pixels bright. That's, all, that's very bright. <laughs> uh, Corey has guaranteed me that we are going to get a Vision will, Pro here. We'll have one here as soon as we get our hands on it. We'll do a live session on it as well. Um, I did hear, though, that production might be limited. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, we need to get our ordering. We'll, we'll get it when we can. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> making any promises. As soon as we can get it, we'll, we'll have one here. We have the money for it. We just got to... Excellent. We just gotta, okay. If anybody dear, else wants one, I write into Corey. Let him dear know. Tim Cook. Oh, yeah, exactly. We are blind nonprofit. Please, Please send us, us some give Vision us, Give us some Vision Pros. Yeah. Might yeah. as well a few. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, cool. that was our chat on the Vision Pro. I, uh, I'm excited about the potential future, and if you want to hear us waffle on about the Vision Pro anymore, then you can go to our YouTube channel, because we do also have a video yeah. uh, about the Apple Vision Pro, and uh, that was released a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah. Um, so, yes, so if you want to hear us waffle on, uh, we kind of cover similar kind of stuff there, but there may be some other things. Dive a little bit more about. into some things. Yeah. But talk a little, there's a little bit more examples of, of accessibility and actually what some of the gestures are going to be. So yes, yes. More specifics. Than yes, that. so feel free to go check that out. It is, of course, youtube.com forward slash vision forward tech connect. And we will be back in two weeks' time. Uh, does anybody have any idea what our topic is in two weeks' time? The well, schedule's been blown a well, little bit open. Yeah, we were going to have our guests from Canute, but I we believe were. that's going to be pushed back into August. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I believe we were going back to my house to talk about accessible oh, sports, yeah. but I'm not sure that we're so. We're not exactly, we have to reconfigure our schedule. That's one of the problems of making a schedule a year out in advance. advance. It gets yeah. a little confused. But check out, you will receive an email, uh, uh, not this coming Friday, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, you will get an email letting you know what our topic's on. If you're not getting those emails or you're not getting those emails the morning of, please, please either sign up uh, for our online LMS, our online technical resource, that's vision. Um, blah, blah, blah. That's mm -hmm. techconnect.vision-forward.org, or if you prefer, just send an email techconnect at vision-forward.org, and we'll make sure you get included on that email. And that'll be important for obviously our YouTube changes coming up too. Indeed. So yes, don't forget that it will be live on YouTube in two weeks' time, but not live on Zoom. If you have any problems or questions getting on, then you can just shoot us an email, uh, techconnect at vision-forward.org. And with that, I think we are done. I think we have wrapped ourselves up in Excellent. a nice little bow. All right. Well, with that being said, we look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Bye for now. Bye all. Thanks for joining us for another Tech Connect Live. If you enjoyed Corey and Luke's antics, be sure to join us next time. For all things Tech Connect, go to vision-forward.org slash techconnect.